Hi, Andrew. How are you doing, Tim? Yeah, good. Good. Nice to meet you. Thank you. So, uh, I've got four kind of broad open banking s questions. Yep. Um, but is there anything, uh, so would you like to tell me anything about Equinix, what you guys are up to at the moment? Sure. Um, I guess we're happy to be the, the now only company that continues uh, a trajectory of growth at 65, or sorry, yeah, 65 quarters in a row of sequential growth. So wow. it's pretty exciting when you can tell analysts that you've been growing for that long. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a business that basically is enabled uh, by the opportunity of other companies living within our data centers and connecting to each other. Mm. So interconnection is at the core of what we do. Cool. Yeah. Good. Right, I'll launch to my four questions. Yeah. Uh, what would you say is the biggest opportunity in open banking? I think uh, one of the biggest opportunities starts with one of the biggest uh, responsibilities. Mm -hmm. um, with the regulatory uh, impact of, uh, of PSD2, mm. um, there's a real, I guess, thrust amongst banks to figure out what their API strategy is going to be like internally. Yeah. Uh, with that strategy, though, always the optimist, um, there's a real opportunity for them to get their data sets in order mm -hmm. and organized in such a way that they can become a platform of that environment uh, mm -hmm. to others in the fintech realm that might collaborate with them. Right. So kind of a readying based on this regulatory pressure might then become an enabler for them for future innovation. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and would you see, have you seen many banks getting on board and trying to, to do that? Or are they struggling? Or how? I, I would suggest that it's, uh, it's something that's going to be a journey rather than kind of a, a one killer app. Yeah. So I think it, it kind of starts with a concept, mm -hmm. but ultimately these kind of forms that we're participating in here um, with the open banking excellence mm -hmm. is where I think mm -hmm. a lot of these good ideas are going to get triggered. So I'd, I'd say again, that it's, it's a burden at the beginning, but I think yeah. again, it could breed innovation. Great. Good. good. And uh, well, well, so kind of what would you say is the biggest challenge then? From yeah, open banking? I think in any situation where you're adding multiple participants, mm -hmm. um, there's probably a, a concern around security. Yes. So there has to be basically that robustness uh, that people have come to expect and the security mm -hmm. around the data that those banks are holding on the customer's behalf. Mm. But when you start to then make it more complex into a broader and more open system, those additional participants add some additional complexity and in turn add some inherent risk. Yeah. So uh, they're a pretty big target already with regards to cyber criminals. So the mm -hmm. fact that now there's different various entry points mm -hmm. for those uh, bad actors to enter into uh, in this open environment, I guess that's something that I think all of us will collectively be concerned with. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so I mean, that leads nicely into the next question. Really, is in what uh, what do you think is going to separate the winners and losers? Yeah. With, with PSD two coming and you know open banking. No, understood. Um, I wish there was kind of the silver bullet answer mm. as well as the silver bullet app that I'm sure all of these banks are aspiring to. Yeah. But I think in the fact that this is going to become an incrementally kind of evolved environment where we don't necessarily know who all of the participants are necessarily today, yeah. the opportunity is, or the, the, the winners from the losers are those who are building for scale and flexibility. So basically offering the robustness that the customers have come to expect, but then moreover, be ready for the unknown. Yeah. So it's, a, it's an interesting riddle to try and solve for because we don't necessarily know what the end game is. Mm -hmm. Rather, we know that this environment will ultimately become a platform of innovation for them. Uh, they've got to figure out how to do it at scale. Hmm. So how do you basically collaborate across your own internal organization, introduce other elements to it in an ecosystem that hasn't been clearly defined yet? Hmm. That, that's not an enviable task, but I think in the context of winners and losers, it's those who are readying yeah. for that ongoing change. Yeah, it's quite exciting. It is. It'll be interesting. It to is see. indeed. Yeah. So, so then what do you think the, uh, the world of open banking is going to look like in five years' time? <laughs> It's almost I, impossible if, if I had a crystal ball, <laughs> um, I think it's going to be one in which the adjacent partners, so at the end of the day, if it's focused on the consumer yeah. uh, or the business entity that it's being, being in service to, the idea that these adjacent industries, whether that be retail or data analytics or mm -hmm. some of the other things that are out there, we shouldn't lose sight of them as being potentially, uh, if not important participants, could even be dominant participants. Hmm. So again, I think this uh, picking your, your what's going to happen in the next five years, uh, <laughs> your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think it's it's a readiness rather than a, a defining what the end state's going to be.